Hello one and all. Today we are going to talk about acceleration of gravity. Now the gentleman who came up with a lot of research and did a lot of work on the acceleration of gravity was Galileo Galilei, a 1600s Italian gentleman. And the common wisdom in the 1600s and prior to that were was that heavy objects will fall faster than light objects. And you and I have all seen light objects like a leaf, a piece of paper, that fall very, very slowly to the ground. And if you drop something like a rock from a high distance, of course that rock is going to hit the ground long before the leaf. Well, Galileo started to question that whole idea. And he did some wonderful experiments where he didn't drop things directly. Uh, he actually rolled them down an inclined plane. And the reason he did that is he slowed down the acceleration of gravity. Um, he did not have watches or stopwatches in his day. So he used something called a water clock. And as water would go into a device, it moved some wheels that actually told time. Pretty nifty thing. But Galileo did not trust this common wisdom. And in his scientific method heart, he decided to test it. So I'm going to ask you through this video to test a few things. And if you press pause periodically and try it, I'd really appreciate that. I'd like you to drop a heavy object, a pencil, a book, a pen, something like that. And at the same time, drop something light, like a piece of paper. So from the same height, and I'm going to, and please hit pause and then come back. Okay, what happened when you dropped a heavy object and a light object? You probably saw the same thing that Galileo's cohorts found, that the heavy object fall, fell much faster than the light object. Okay, now I want you to try this. Take two pieces of paper, and if you've got two that are identical, it works really, really nicely. Because if they're identical pieces of paper, you know that the mass for each piece of paper will be the same. But drop one straight down and crumple one and drop them from the same height. Okay, what happens? All right, what happened when you tried that? Well, probably the crumpled piece of paper is going to hit the ground a lot faster than the regular full sheet of paper. Now, the reason that that happens, of course, is because of air resistance. And Galileo looked at situations like that and said, "If what if you could get rid of air resistance? What if you could take it out of the equation? What's going to happen? Well, he did an awful lot of experiments using inclined planes. And what he found was this. And this is a big deal. Put a star by this and copy this down. He found that all freely falling objects near the surface of the Earth are accelerated at the same rate, regardless of mass, if air friction can be ignored. All right, this is a big important statement. And we're going to spend a few minutes going through all of the different pieces of this statement. The acceleration of gravity that we use today is abbreviated a lowercase g in some equations, or a with a subscript g to indicate a special case of acceleration when the acceleration is caused by gravity. And that value is 9.80 meters per second squared. If you happen to be working in the English system, that is 32.2 feet per second squared. And there are many images like this. And Galileo did hold public demonstrations where he would go to a tall place and drop a heavy object and a light object and show that they both hit the ground indistinguishable in time from each other. So he did a lot of demonstrations from this. And one of my favorite quotes from science was that one of Galileo's critics said, if you had not shown me this so elegantly and completely, I would have believed it if it was not against the writings of the ancients like Aristotle and some other people. Because what it proves is human beings sometimes don't believe their own eyes when they have an idea stuck in their head. So what do we mean by this acceleration of gravity is the same for all ob objects that are in free fall. So what do I mean by free fall? Free fall means dropped. You just drop an object. It does not mean if you've got something that is falling off of a roof, like a cinder block that's falling off of a roof and dragging another block after it, then the acceleration of gravity will not be 9.8 meters per second squared. It's going to be some fraction less because there is a retarding force in that direction.
But if you just drop something, not, of course, with a, uh, a, a force like a parachute, not with a drag or a resistance force like air friction, then the object's going to have that 9.80 meters per second squared. The other part of that statement was near the surface of the Earth. So how close to the surface of the Earth can you use 9.80 meters per second squared? And the truth is, this value is pretty close within the atmosphere. And the atmosphere uh, goes up to about 50,000 feet. Uh, and airplanes, jet airplanes, fly about 35,000 to 40,000 feet is where jets are going to fly. So as long as you are in the Earth's atmosphere, this number works pretty well. Now, does it vary a little as you go higher and further away from the Earth, or if you go to a low spot lower? Absolutely. But the differences there are many, many, many decimals beyond that 9.80. So for most of the things you and I are going to do in class, 9.80 works perfectly well. Here's the one that is really weird and very counterintuitive, and that's the idea that when you drop something, mass does not matter. It can kind of work in most people's brains if they talk about dropping like a bowling ball and a tennis ball. But if we can ignore air resistance, a piano, an elephant, um, a small pickup truck, all of those things would be accelerated towards the surface of the Earth at the same rate. Now, trust me, this is very counterintuitive. It doesn't feel right in a lot of human brains. And the reason is you and I live in a world where there is air resistance. And so what we do in, or in physics in order to kind of deal with this fact is we kind of set parameters. When can we ignore air resistance? When is it acceptable? Well, any object that is relatively small. So in physics problems, we're going to be doing a lot of things with balls and bullets and, and small objects like that. Because as an object gets larger, you prop, your common sense tells you the air resistance on it is going to be more. And your sense is right. We try and, in physics, work very often with aerodynamic objects, things that are relatively smooth, like a bullet or a ball. Um, as you found when you dropped a whole sheet of paper, that probably caught an awful lot of air, and air resistance became an issue. So we're going to try and ignore those issues by dealing with things with lower surface areas whenever possible. The other thing we can do when we're trying to do acceleration of gravity problems without worrying about air resistance, is we are not talking about things that are crazy fast speeds. When I mean crazy fast speeds, I mean above the speed of sound, bigger than Mach 1. Then the speeds start really, air resistance can, can be a big deal as you go faster and faster. So as long as we are talking about things that are close to the surface of the Earth, we just drop them, they are relatively small and aerodynamic, then their mass doesn't matter, and they will accelerate downward at 9.80 meters per second squared. Try this. Drop a heavy object and a light object from the same height and see what happens. Okay, did you do it? Oh, I hope you did, because it's kind of fun, and I love it when people prove things for themselves, that this works not just in physics, but it works in your, in your room. Um, if you can ignore air resistance for these small things, these two are going to hit the ground in almost exactly the same amount of time. And that is proving Galileo is right. Now, as something is dropped, the object is accelerated. Now, what that means is this. At the end of each second, the object is actually going faster than it was the second before. So in this illustration, I've got a person who's on a tall cliff, and this fellow is dropping a ball down. If it falls for one second, at the end of one second, it's traveling at 9.8 meters per second. Why? Because acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second per second. That's that crazy acceleration units. It is going to increase its velocity by 9.8 meters per second every second. So after it's dropped one second, it's going 9.8. After it's dropped for two seconds, it's going 2 times 9.8, or 16.6. .6. After 3 seconds, 29.4, which is 3 times 9.8. Every second, it's going 9.8 meters per second faster. 4 seconds, 
five seconds, and so on. The other thing I love about this illustration is it gives you this idea that in the first second, the distance it travels is kind of small. In the second second, the displacement is bigger. Third second, because it is traveling faster, the velocity, excuse me, the velocity is bigger, so the displacement's bigger. Fourth second, velocity's bigger, displacement's bigger. And in that last second, velocity is bigger, and the displacement in that last second is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. This is a perfect example of accelerated motion. As we continue on with the course, one of the things I love about the acceleration of gravity is that it is independent of all other motions. We're not going to do a lot of this this chapter, but we're going to do more of it in the future chapters. We're going to start analyzing motion that is a lot more complicated. Um, baseballs being thrown, divers off of a diving board, some crazy soul who's jumping a bunch of cars in, in a vehicle, uh, rocket launches. We can use the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared, in all of these very unique and different situations because gravity is not smart. It doesn't turn on, it doesn't turn off, it doesn't care if you're going through the air forward at 100 miles per hour like a fast ball pitcher, or if you are kind of just jumping a little bit forward through the air. Acceleration of gravity is the same throughout. And I'm going to recommend a couple other videos to show you what falling objects really do look like in a vacuum, um, and those are kind of fun. All right, I will see you next time where we're going to do some example problems with all of this stuff. See you later. Bye.